Zero four. Dirty weeaboo. Loser. Oh, we can't get a single win. Stupid. How many wins? Loser broke boy. I'm <laughs> out <laughs> us. Oh, okay, we're good. I'm good. Okay. Uh, let's, let's just... Uh... <laughs> Episode 3 is here, guys. I know you guys miss me. All right, it's, uh, it's been a very busy weekend. So uh, we're finally back. So before we get started with anything, let's get started with some mail. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever actually like this section. Oh, let me know what you guys think about the mail section, uh, just to see what I like pick up and stuff like that. But uh, you know, let's just get into it and uh, cue the montage. All right, big package loot, guys. So this one's a little bit uh, too big for, to be on the counter. So I mean, we're gonna find out, you know, give you a little hint, a little Wizards of the Coast product here. And then you guys might like this uh, if you just play other stuff, but it's not Yu-Gi-Oh related, but here we go. Yo, check that out, guys. Come on, I know there's gotta be some fans out there, right? So this stuff was uh, kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, uh, maybe we're gonna be a Magic the Gathering channel now. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yeah, this, Nice stuff right here, guys. Look at this. Ooh, yo. Comment down below what other card games you guys play because uh, you know, there's a lot of great ones out there besides Yu-Gi-Oh. But uh, I'm gonna be, uh, I'm not gonna open all of them, but uh, we're gonna open some of them that I do wanna try out and uh, play some Commander. And uh, we're gonna try again Vampires one more time. One last ride, guys. Um, you know, I, I don't wanna be stuck here forever. Let's be, let's be real. And every good Yu-Gi-Oh player always plays a couple of different decks so we're gonna try out this one more time i i have a feeling i know what to do with the deck so uh you know let's get started and make some of those changes so starting off we got to take out you know a few of the bricks so i think zombie world while while i thought about it it wasn't really as good as i thought it would be so um i'm taking those out because you know they they don't really do anything and adding like a few more zombie cards so i added another mizuki and a unit zombies so technically mizuki is like also not really the best card to draw, but it actually does more when uh, when you draw it with Horus. So uh, I prefer that over like the drawing like a zombie world or whatever. And then the unit zombie obviously is just, uh, you know, like really good zombie support. So uh, we'll take that. And then a couple changes to the non-engine. We're going to take out uh, some of the stuff that was like, you know, like the hand traps. And we're going to put in more impactful stuff like droplets. I might regret this because uh, I kind of like Dark Ruler 2 or like evenly. But we'll try droplet for now and uh, see where that takes us. And for our extra deck, of course, uh, we're going to have to add good old sp okay like i don't think we had the hand economy to be uh using our own cards for unicorn and sp is just the most broken card known to man like let's let's just be real like that's that's just no uh no debate there you can't you cannot debate sp and how strong that card is like to be honest man worthy i am be honest but you know we're gonna add to the deck and uh there was a couple other link monsters uh like the link monster from the new set rage of the abyss um the the flying mary ship the flying duchess whatever, whatever you call it uh, that card is also like kind of decent, although I don't think it's like too great in our deck though. Uh, nothing that we really want to revive from our own graveyard that badly. So for now, we're going to leave it out and uh, I'll keep it in the binder, but don't expect to see it anytime soon. All right, guys, so here's the deck list right here. Um, so I think the general idea and the combo I was going for already, I think I still want to do that. But just removing the zombie world part because uh, e even like during the combo, I couldn't really get that part anyways consistently. Uh, I would have to choose between that or sending the Mizuki. So I think just taking it out completely, uh, leaving out the bricks and then putting in like stuff like talents just to help us like play through more hand traps or something like that. Because I think the overall combo is still pretty strong. Like uh, vampire ghost uh, with like another like vampire or, or whatever is like still uh, still can make a really good end board. So I I'm still going to go for that and then playing closer to the 40. So I see the uh, the King Sark cards uh, more often. And then, uh, so then we move the, like, the hand traps to the side deck and uh, took out the Bistials, and I think something like this is uh, kind of where I want it. I did 
I do really want to like put evenly matched in, but I'm not really sure what I should be taking out for it. And the meta is like completely different because the new set. So I don't know. We're about to see how it is and then uh, go from there. So a couple stuff I learned that I'm going to be doing for this locals is siding out probably the the combo cards. So there's a, there's a lot of cards here like uh, like Ghost Sleeper, Ghost Fusion, Changshi. Those cards are going to be going out when I'm going second for sure. Uh, and then just putting in some like hand traps or whatever because uh they were breaking me so much and i'd rather have a hand trap to be honest because uh, i a lot of the times when i'm going second i won't be able to full combo anyways so there's no point in really having some of those cards in there so this should help out with some of the siding patterns that i was having issues with because i wasn't really sure if i wanted to keep combo pieces in the deck but now that i'm playing it yeah those combo pieces just gotta go they get they gotta leave the deck uh going second so i mean hopefully this time with the new lessons that we learned, maybe we'll do a little bit better, but uh, let's head on over to Locals. Why is he leaking my sauce? It's sweaty, man. Yeah. It's not sweaty. I don't even have ulti Dragoons. Yo, but that one's still a fortune. Oh, is it? I don't know. Probably. I found him on bolt. Round one of Locos now. And uh, this match is kind of a special one because the guy I'm going up against is uh, one of the guys who kind of got me going when I first got back into Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, his name is Danny. And let's just say... Um, when I needed to know something, he was kind of the guy to go to go to uh, back then. So, uh, you know, I, he hasn't been playing for a while now, but um, he, he just kind of started again. He kind of goes in and out uh, lately and uh, he's on Memento, which is uh, not great for a good to for our deck. Uh, let's be real, because we put in, you know, a good card called like Droplets, which doesn't really do anything. Considering the fact that the biggest problem on his board is the trap card he has set in the back row, which can technically negate five monster effects on the field. And uh, yeah, we kind of need our monster effects. Uh, the only way I can realistically see us being able to push through the board is if we have um, the, uh, the the Horus monsters, which uh, we can like kind of abuse like King Sarka. But even then, it's still a lot to deal with. Uh, the, there's still so much interruption. I mean, look at that board. Like, that's like, there's like four, four or five plus different things I had to deal with. And our vampire stuff just isn't quite enough. I mean, I tried a bit just to uh, see how you would re, uh, interact. But uh, obviously, it's just, Droplet was just not enough. So, let's try going first this time and uh, see what we got. And the hand is looking really good. Like, I'm not going to lie. That That's a really nice looking hand. I mean, Imseti... Uh, seeing Imseti is just always great, and especially seeing King Sark with it, just having like the extra uh, insurance. But uh, I, I just end up pitching. I mean, I doubt he's on uh, Ghost Ogre, but you know. So we got Horus set up. Uh, I'm just gonna go for Zombie Vampire here and uh, see if we get plays going here. Uh, so we might, you know, lose to Nib if that ends up coming up, but you know, we'll see. Uh, we hit the Unizombie, which is pretty nice, and a Mizuki. So. Uh, having a Mizuki in rotation already is really nice. Um, I should be able to get to uh, about full combo. It won't be exactly uh, the strongest combo, I think, at this point. But uh, we have enough here. Uh, we go Mizuki, send them back a familiar, add a uh, Shadow Vampire. So we'll be able to uh, kind of uh, get our place started through that. And of course, um, Vampire Sucker is, is just great here. Uh, getting the draw one and also... Being able to uh, use his monster as a tribute to keep the vampire sucker up too. So it's all it all kind of works out nicely. I mean, uh, we have like our normal. We have extra normal with the, the vampire ghost too. So uh, we're looking pretty good. We have a bunch of bodies here. Uh, and what you guys are seeing here is uh, a way too full combo here. I mean, we're able to get to... Uh, to the sprint using our link to uh and of course we have a level five and our level six for our mad mauler but unfortunately there is a nibiru in our future um that's not great uh yeah did we overextend i don't know maybe it's kind of hard to say but at the end of the day you know uh set to pass you know like what, what's the worst that can happen right <laughs> we have our uh, good old anti-spell 
because uh, that card's real good. Uh, he changed the, the quick play goblin spell to attribute his Nibiru to summon. So uh, from what I can see, I don't think Memento really has anything too much to be able to do here. Uh, so we're going to see uh, a called by two. Uh, he's trying to like summon back. I just don't want him to have any monsters on field like at all. And uh, he's like, how much, how big is that token? Uh, so at this point, you know, we calculate a little bit and like, yeah, this is definitely over 8k. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, he, he just loses there. He can't out the nib token. And, uh, you know, we have a bunch of engine even if he could. But yeah, he shows us our, his hand. Nothing he could really do uh, under uh, under anti-spell. So uh, game three, let's see how well we do here. I mean, okay, we see Happy and we see Nibiru, you know, and we see King Sark. Okay, we see King Sark with the Happy. I feel a lot better about that. So I'm not really sure when I'm supposed to nib Memento. Maybe, to be honest, I waited too long. I maybe could have just done it earlier. So he gets to a point where he's about to make a... The high wave king Caesar, and uh, at that point, I I had to nib. Like, there's you can't wait any longer at this point. So, uh, so from here, we nib, and I'm hoping, hoping it's enough. Uh, I don't quite think it is. Uh, he still gets to uh, a pretty substantial board uh, at this point, and also, um, you know, we activated a monster effect during the main phase. So you guys know what that means. We have uh, a potential hand rip in the future here. I mean, like you guys already see thrust into talents into look at the hand. And of course, the King Sark we had is gone. Uh, this happy is looking extra dead in our hand now. So let's just keep it going here. Maybe we might be able to play through some stuff, but uh, having the trap set, that's five monster negates still. And, uh, you know, we have an Ash Blossom, which is a little too late at this point. I mean, it's game three, so we still try and play through anyways. But uh, I'm not feeling too hopeful here. Because, uh, I mean, he has an IP set up to go into SP now. Uh, I had to. I think I have to stop his, his monster search because he can search the one that steals one of my monsters or something like that. So uh, we get, you know, another body on board. Uh, he, like, goes into SP and all that. And, uh, you know, we pass back because we can't do anything else. And from there, it's just game. Like, he has more than enough damage at this point, And uh, we lose. So this is not a great matchup, I'm going to be honest. Having the droplet is not good in this matchup. I'd rather have a hand trap. So I don't know. One of those weird things. Uh, I guess if I had evenly matched, that may have been better. So maybe that was the right call, going for evenly matched instead of droplet. But... Round two, we're going first, uh, or at least the opponent made us go first. So we already know it's going to be a Tenpai match. Uh, we get Valor, and the nice thing about this is with playing the uh, the talents is we can look at the hand. So we're definitely looking at the hand. Look at the hand and see a whole bunch of Andro to plus effect Valor. So at this point, I'm thinking um, we could just hit the Valor. Uh, we just hit the Valor and then full combo here. Uh, we should be able to play it just fine. So... Uh, I, I go off here. Like we're gonna fast forward. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff. Uh, I had a bunch of stuff in grade, like the Mizuki and all that. So from here, it's just the combo that I showed you guys in episode two, uh, and actually the combo that we were about to go to uh, the in round one. But then we got nibbed. But now I know we have no interruptions uh, to be stopped here. So at this point, it's just gonna be the same board of I think what like Dispater, uh, the other Synchro Ten, and also. Um, I think I ended on the vampire. Yeah, I ended on the uh, the vampire monster uh, or the the rank monster Sheridan. I I don't really Dampier. I don't don't ask me <laughs> uh, because we have the counter trap uh, that we we're able to add during this combo too. So we're looking at like we, we do have a fire monster negate for the Gen X and like yeah of course the counter trap and dissipator. That's just like too much. I know that already beats uh, his ten pie hand. So going to game two, let's see what we got going on here now. Uh, so hopefully we draw a nice hand and of course Imp Seti, the savior. Uh, see, this is what I expected more of, you know, draw a little bit more Imp Seti, King Sarks. We get hit by a, a Fuoros. So our first encounter of the series against this card. And uh, I I thought a bit if I wanted Ash and I thinking no, I'd rather keep the Ash for uh, for his turn. So I just go Imp Seti, happy, you know, some, some of them out and uh, we have a D barrier. So I was just like, I, I don't really care. I'm just going to not let him draw a card. <laughs> so he goes, uh, Pydra. I let this resolve. I'm not really sure if I'm supposed to let this resolve. I, I thought about just ashing that. And of course, uh, but then I just end up ashing the, the field spell here. Um, and we get to see if he can break through it. And from 
you know, he, he thinks a lot and he's not able to. Like, he has Regeki, Imperm, Ash. Nothing really that he can stop us with because, uh, yeah, the horse cars just kind of play themselves at that point. So, round three, we get shiftered. Okay, uh, well, we already bricked in the hand anyways, so let's just go. He has his, like, Inheritance. So he's playing Ritual Beast, and I'm like, yeah, he has combo. Let's just go game two. <laughs> there's there's just no reason I'm going to play that one out. That, there's no way. So uh, going on to game two. Um, the hand isn't the worst. It could be worse. Uh, but So we try and play a bit. Uh, I'm seeing he doesn't really have any hand traps from what I'm seeing. Or either that or he is nib. But uh, I get to a point where uh, where I do start to see full combo here. Uh, we have a bunch of bodies, uh, and so... Um, at this point, I think it's just going to be uh, adding good old Shadow Vampire. And of course, we end up kind of like with the same board as we've always done here. Uh, but I guess it's an IP instead. So yeah, nice Vampire board, right guys? Um, so he tries to go to battle and then activates... Uh, or I try to chain IP and then he goes to Book of Eclipse. So all of our monsters going face down. And then we get even lead. Okay, good start. Uh, I'm keeping the Dissipator because it's both follow-up and just a big body and interruption. So... He passes turn, so fortunately we're not dead. We see the King Sark off the top, and of course from there, uh, you guys already know the deal, right? A bunch of monsters. Uh, he has a set card, and I kind of just assumed there's another Book of Eclipse. So I summon a bunch of monsters. Um, and he's probably going to wait to like the last possible moment, because I don't really have like an Omni Negate. So I get to a point where I add the Counter Trap, and I still have my normal summon. And then when I try to go to battle, he's of course going to flip everything. So on his turn, um, I'll have my Dissipator interrupt and I'll have the Voivode set up and also the counter trap. So even if he does, I like, get to play. I just know like I have enough to uh, kind of like counter play uh, whatever he's going to have. So it's all right. Game three, though, uh, last round of our local because it was kind of a small local this time around. He starts off with, oh, no, Fissure. D Fisher. Oh no. Full combo? Oh no. Say it ain't so, guys. The nightmare has begun. Is that an Infernal Flame Banshee? Oh no. Protos. Protos called Dark and D Fisher. There's just no hope. I, I don't even try to play. Like, I can't. I actually can't even play. There's just no way. So, uh, yeah. That's the locals run. I mean, it could have been worse, right? It could have been 0 3. <laughs> but going 1 2 is the next best thing. All right, guys, so that's it for the locals run. Uh, we didn't do as bad, you know, as last time, but I think it's time we move on to another deck and uh, we'll have a little clue at the end and you guys should be able to tell what kind of deck we're about to play. But uh, until then, I'll see you guys later and peace out. Now roll that hint. Yeah.